What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. So today I'm showing off a PC I've recently built. As a small channel, this takes quite a bit of money for me to invest into, I don't get sent parts. So if you can appreciate that, click that like button and subscribe for more stuff like this. But if you've been following my channel for a while, you might have seen my more recent videos where I showed off the full potential of the GPU inside this machine and another where I gave my impressions of the case I built all of this PC in. So if you want to know more about the case and how it is to build in, go and check out that video. And if you want to see how well the GTX 960 inside this machine performs with more modern games and with an overclocked i7 6700K processor, that video is also in the description for you guys to check out. If you're interested to see what happens when you pair that GTX 960 inside a 400 pounds Ryzen based gaming PC and see what it's really capable of, keep watching to find out. Right, so let's get down to business. First things first, I'll run you through what components we've got in this going in the system, and I'll let you know how much I paid for each thing in the description below. Bear in mind though, I bought these, most of these parts in November slash December. I'm a bit slow, yes I know. So the prices may have changed, but I'll do my best to find links at Amazon and other places as to where I, you can pick up most of these items. Some items I picked up were used and therefore cheaper but there's no reason why you can't imitate or even better this, this system by buying even more used parts. The thing I want to focus on mainly though for this whole PC is upgradability. A lot of budget builds I see don't have upgradability or longevity in mind, whereas this build totally does. So first up, we have the, the case. The Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1. A really nice, clean looking and subtle micro ATX case that cost me around 40 pounds. It's got a really dark side panel, which I like, so that when the system is off, it blends into any setup really nicely. The side panel is acrylic, no tempered glass on this one, but this is a budget build, so I hope I can be forgiven. It was a bit of a pain to build in this case, but if you wanna know more about the case, check out that video I mentioned earlier in the description down below. The LED fans on the front of the case aren't included. They are some Corsair AF120 fans, extra loud edition. Totally optional, but cost me about 20 pounds-ish. I completely overlooked the fact they were not PWM, so they run at max RPM because there's no fan controller on this case. So this case has only one case fan, so you will definitely want to get two fans of your choice for the front to help with the airflow. Up next is that Ryzen CPU I mentioned. It's a Ryzen 3 1200, and what I'm loving about AMD at the moment is that they have so much versatility. For, four, for 48 pounds, I got this four core, four thread, overclockable processor. If you want to just spend, say, £60 more, you can get a 6-core, 12-thread Beast Ryzen 5 CPU. So plenty of upgradability in the future to more powerful CPUs. My Ryzen 3 1200, I did manage to overclock it to 3.9 gigahertz, about 1.35 volts, and kept things stable. Increasing the voltage was not enough for me to get 4 gigahertz. I was happy to get as close to the magic number 4 as I did. Next up is the motherboard. It's an AB350M Pro 4 motherboard from ASRock. A long name? but it's a great micro ATX board, offering great IO, including USB Type-C, support for overclocking, support for M.2 SSDs, and four DIMM slots for RAM, which is something I really wanted to make sure I got. Meaning if we fill it up with two for now, we can easily add two more sticks later, and it's just a pretty good board for 65 pounds. So speaking of RAM, we move on to the first used part of this build. I got eight gigs, a great starting point, of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, we all know that Ryzen loves fast memory and anything around 3 MHz is what I feel is the best option in regards prices. I got this kit for £60 used from CEX and brand new on Amazon, this kit costs around £105, so a nice saving there. I did manage to easily overclock this memory to just over 3000 MHz as well, which is even better considering the price I paid. Whilst we're talking about used, the GTX 960 I'm using has all, is also second hand. It cost me £50 and it performs very similar to a GTX 1050 Ti and easily outperforms the GTX 1050, both cards that cost over £100. It does require a cable from the PSU, unlike the newer options, and uses a little bit more power, but I'm sure we can forgive it considering how much money it saves us. Another used part is the storage. I picked up a 240GB Kingston SSD for £50. Not much of a saving, but that means we get fast loading and boot up times, and fast load speeds for our games and file transfers. I hate seeing builds that recommend you save £5 or £10 in favour of a hard drive, so I'll always choose an SSD, no matter how tight the budget is. SSDs for me are an absolute must for any PC user, let alone a PC gaming enthusiast. Yes, 240GB won't be enough, that's a fact, but if you want to game now, 
and enjoy it, then spend money later on on a hard drive for storing files. You'll be happier for it, trust me. Then to power this system, we've got an 80 plus silver semi-modular 400 watt PSU from Be Quiet. I mentioned earlier about upgradability, and this is one thing that lets us down in that category. But it was cheap. It's from a very respectable German brand and it's got great efficiency and reliability. I managed to get it for about £30 because it had a damaged box, which I was happy to accept with open arms. And I feel like the modular PSUs just help make builds look so much nicer by not having spare cables lying around. Also, the cables are nice flat black cables, which is much easier in the eye than some cheaper alternatives. Right then, let's sit back, relax, and take a look at the footage of how all this went together. Then once it's all built, I'll get some benchmarks up on the screen so you can see how well it performs once it's all together.
So now you've seen it built, you've seen it perform, in my opinion, really well for this price range. Hopefully I've given you an idea of what used and new parts are capable of, and even what AMD is capable of, and in 2018 it's going to get better and better for Team Red. The best bit about this for me though is that it's a really future-proof system. The AM4 platform that the motherboard supports will be supported officially by AMD until 2020, so a new Ryzen processor, whatever they may call it, that comes out this year or 2019 or 2020 will still work on that old B350 ASRock motherboard from 2017. As well as having the four DIMM slots, you can easily add another 8GB of RAM for great optimal amount of gaming. 16 gigs of RAM is kind of what I'd, it's kind of the sweet spot for me, what I'd always recommend if you had the money. And even we've got super fast storage with the M.2 slot on the motherboard. The 960 performs really, really well at 1080p at medium to high settings, or even ultra settings on eSport titles. So there's a lot of life, blah, blah. there's a lot of life left in it, and it's easy enough to upgrade in the future. The 400 watt PSU may be the only bottleneck as far as upgradability goes, but even so, PC components are becoming more and more efficient. It might not be as much of a bottleneck down the line. Who knows? It probably will be though. As always though guys, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to click that like button. And if you didn't, click that dislike button. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about today's video. And if you decide my face has not offended you, it's totally fine, it's unoffensive. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so we can see each other again soon. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.